everybody! It's Miss Forslin again, and this week in kindergarten we read a book called Elmer. And Elmer is by David McKee, and it's one of my favorite books. And you'll see why in just a minute. Um, after the video, we're going to have a little demonstration of how to make some artwork inspired by Elmer and the Elmer Day Parade. There once was a herd of elephants. Elephants young, elephants old, elephants tall and short, fat and thin. All were different, but all were happy, and almost all were the same color. All except Elmer. Elmer was not elephant color. He was patchwork. Elmer was yellow and orange and red and pink and purple and blue and green and black and white. It was Elmer who kept the other elephants happy. Their games and jokes were always his idea. If an elephant was laughing, the cause was usually Elmer. But Elmer himself wasn't happy. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought. No wonder they laugh at me. One morning, just as the others were waking up, Elmer slipped away. As he walked through the jungle, Elmer met other animals. Good morning, Elmer, they said. After a long walk, Elmer found what he was looking for, a large bush covered with elephant-colored berries. Elmer caught hold of the bush and shook it until the berries fell on the ground. Then Elmer lay down and rolled over on the berries this way and that. He picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over until he was covered with berry juice. When he had finished, there wasn't a sign of any yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white. Elmer looked like any other elephant. On his way back through the jungle, Elmer passed the other animals. Good morning, elephant, they said. When Elmer rejoined the herd, none of the other elephants noticed him. As he stood there, Elmer felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around. Same old jungle, same old blue sky, same old rain cloud, same old elephants. The other elephants were standing absolutely still, silent and serious. Elmer had never seen them so serious before. It made him want to laugh. Finally, he could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk and at the top of his voice shouted, Boo! The other elephants jumped in surprise. Elmer was helpless with laughter. Then the others began to laugh. Too bad Elmer isn't here to share the fun, they said, laughing harder and harder. And then the rain cloud burst. When the rain fell on Elmer, his patchwork started to show again. Oh, Elmer, gasped an old elephant as Elmer was washed back to normal. You've played some good jokes, but this has been the biggest laugh of all. What would we do without you? We must celebrate this day every year, said another. The day of Elmer's best joke. All of us elephants will decorate ourselves in his honor, said a third, and Elmer will decorate himself elephant color. And one day each year, the elephants color themselves yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white and have a parade. If you happen to see an elephant, in the Elmer's Day Parade, who is just an ordinary elephant color, you will know it must be Elmer. The end. Hi, everybody. So 
This week's artwork is inspired by one of my favorite books, Elmer, and we just finished reading it. And at the end of the story, they had an Elmer's Day parade. And in the Elmer's Day parade, the elephants painted themselves with lots of different patterns. Patterns are things that repeat. So for example, these two elephants right here have flowers that repeat all over their bodies. And this elephant right here has stripes. And this elephant right here has some circles with some weird circles inside. We've got little hearts on this little baby elephant. This elephant is patchwork, kind of like Elmer. And some of them have line patterns. Some of them have shape patterns. There's lots of different patterns that repeat at the end of this story. Today's project is about pattern. How you make your patterns is up to you. If you would like to draw an elephant and fill it with a pattern, like at the end of the story in the Elmer's Day Parade, awesome. You may do that and upload it to Google Classroom. But if you want to go a little further and try something a little bit different, you can draw your pattern and make a print or an impression. A print or an impression is when you have something called a plate in art that has all your color on it. Most printmakers, they start out with ink, but you might not have ink at home and that's totally fine. So I'm gonna show you a way to make a print using things that you'll have at home. You can use pencil, you can use crayons, you can use oil pastels if you have them, or even chalk. And I have a little container of chalk for myself right here. If you're using something like chalk or oil pastel and you don't wanna make a mess at home, you can use a tablecloth like I have or some newspaper to cover your table. You can even use newspaper as a way, or magazines, as a way of putting down your color to start. I'm using just a regular piece of paper um, because that's what I have at home. And it's a little bit thicker, so it'll hold up to lots of scribbling. So the first thing you need to do to make your color where your ink would be if you were using ink is to scribble. And I almost never let people scribble in art class, do I? But for this project, you get to scribble on your paper. So I'm scribbling on one half of my paper with crayon. And I'm filling as much of my paper so that there's no white peeking out. If you don't have crayons at home, that's okay. You can do this project with pencil. So I've already started my little pencil patch. All I gotta do is keep on adding pencil. And I'm turning my pencil to the side and holding it in the middle because that covers more area than holding it straight up and down. If you have chalk at home and you're short on pencils and crayons, or if you wanna try all three, you can also use chalk. So I have crayon, pencil, now I'm gonna put chalk over here. And I don't have very much chalk at home, which makes me sad, but I do have two pieces. I have a blue and a red. I'm just gonna use the blue for now. This is not my finished artwork. This is what I'm going to be using. It's like a tool to make my finished artwork. Let's put a piece of paper right on top of all of my different experiments with color. Now, with my pencil or a pen, it doesn't really matter. We can do either way. Sometimes a ballpoint pen works best, whatever you have at home. You're gonna make your patterns by pressing hard on your paper. And we're gonna see which one works the best, chalk, pencil, or crayon. At home, if you just wanna do one, that's totally fine. And we're gonna make a pattern. I'm gonna make some dots over my chalk, but I'm, instead of making dot dots, I'm making nice big circles. And in my Zoom call with the kindergartners this week, I made happy faces. So I'm gonna make some happy faces, but I'm gonna color in the eyes. So they're nice and bright. And I'm trying to only press hard with my pen, but I might be pressing a little too hard with my fingers, so we'll see what happens. 
So that's how the chalk works. So I've got my, my pattern of smiley faces. I could continue with my smileys to make my pattern, okay? Um, if, I, if I'm working with my pencil part in this middle, I could try a different pattern, maybe some zigzags. And remember, a pattern is any line, shape, or color that repeats. And we're focusing on line patterns this week. So I have repeated my zigzag. Now when I peel it off of my paper, you can see where the gray of my pencil has been transferred to the back of my paper because I've pressed hard or made a print. Now let's try the last part of my paper, the crayon. And it's kind of scribbly and fun. So maybe, hmm, maybe this time my pattern will be triangles. I'm gonna do a shape pattern. So I'm making my lines into a shape and I have triangles first. And then maybe I'll have a straight line and then triangles. Okay, let's see how my pattern of lines and triangles is gonna turn out. So now I'm gonna peel back and I have my rainbow pattern revealed. Pretty cool, huh? So this week, just a reminder, all you have to do is make an artwork that has a pattern. It could be an elephant with a pattern on it, or you can try this technique too. You could make a pattern on your sidewalk with chalk. You could make a pattern in a painting. But remember, patterns are lines, shapes, and colors that repeat. So something has to repeat in your drawing. Awesome, or painting. All right, I'll see you next week.